It's good enough to get up over the balcony, wasn't it? Yeah. And not kill anybody? Alright, so my daughter, having been cast in a local community theater production, is one of the leads for the Adams family as Wednesday Adams came to me asking if I would build her a crossbow for the production. I built sets and other production related assets for the theaters before, and um, she was thinking, you've got a bunch of PVC pipe and some rope, and you could throw something together for me. I just need a crossbow. It needs to be able to actually shoot but not kill anybody of course I thought PVC pipe I can't do it so this is what we built it is a uh, fully functional medieval crossbow made out of ash and um, some bits and pieces I had laying around the shop so hang out with me as we build a functional medieval crossbow that shoots but doesn't kill anybody. So I have a piece of an ash limb that came from a tree that was taken out by the emerald ash borer. Been standing dead for a while. I'd split it in half and then joint one side the short edge so that uh, we can have a straight surface to run against the table saw fence. And then joint the face. And we can use those reference edges to run the log through on the table saw doesn't quite cut all the way through so then we need to take it over to the bandsaw and finish the cut up so we can end up with the width that I think is about the depth that we're going to have for the body of the crossbow and yes it really does make that horrific sound I'm coming back and I just want to square up the other side then we'll take a look at this uh, nice piece of ash Okay, well, in this piece of wood, there's a nice shape. It's very crossbow handled right here in the separation between the sapwood and the heartwood. Highlighted here with the pencil. But that's definitely a crossbow and this piece of wood crying to get out. So now that we know the shape that we need out of the wood, I'm just going to run it through the bandsaw and rough cut to that line. Essentially, I'm just kind of removing the sapwood from this piece of ash. Everything else just kind of shaped itself. I'm trying to get a feel for the length, some movement, um, where the draw is going to end, where we need to cut some openings so that we can build a trigger mechanism. Just kind of rough sketching that stuff out as I get a feel for where I think these things need to go. Make some marks for shaping. Overall, it's coming out to a pretty good start. Next thing I do is take it over to the bench, clamp it down, and then use a draw knife to try and shape the handle and the rest of the body. Just rounding the edges off. This knife is not very sharp, so don't give me any flack about that. And I am in no means an expert at this. I just make it up as I go along. <laughs> Next up, it's over to the drill press. Where we're going to just kind of hog out material. 
cavity that's going to hold the trigger mechanism. Try and clear as much of that stuff out using a couple paddle bits and a Forstner bit. Then back over to the workbench and I'm just trying to square up the opening a little bit. Give me a little bit of a guide so that I can come in and chisel this out. I'm just going to start out going along the lines cutting the fibers of the wood just kind of getting things started um, quite a bit of chiseling here um, so you know unleash the super speed we'll fast forward through this you can still get a good idea of what's involved but uh, you won't have to sit here for half an hour while uh, while I chisel out this opening next I'm going to square up the in. And then we're going to make multiple passes over the front of the crossbow with a very shallow table saw blade. This is going to create a groove, a flight groove or bolt channel, so that um, the uh, bolts can stay going straight um, as they're flung off the end of the crossbow. Just use a chisel to come in and clean up any bits that are left over. Next we're going to use the other half of the log and we're going to rip some 1 8 inch strips and then we're going to glue those up in a lamination to produce the limbs for the crossbow. The next step is to build a jig that is going to allow us to create some bent laminations for the crossbow limb. I'm going to try a couple of different options. Um, I'm going to make um, a three strip lamination and a four strip lamination and then after those are dry and I come back and find out that um, only Odysseus is going to be able to bend this bow um, off camera I come back and create another lamination where I'm only using two strips and that seems to produce just the right amount of uh, flex and stiffness that we need for the, the bow to function. What are those for? Those are for spreading glue. Mm. Glue. Glue spreading. Because it's about to get messy in here. Bye. Get plenty of sawdust around in order to handle glue. Clear it off. It's like magic. It just goes away.
bending some wood. All right, I know there are gaps, but it's a prop. It only needs to shoot a little bit. So it'll be fine, it'll be fine. Don't worry. I'll just close some gaps this way. Oh yeah. That's it. Okay, while the glue dries on our limbs, we can go over to the scroll saw and we can work on cutting out the release mechanism for our trigger set. I know it looks a little funky, but uh, that's going to hold a stop at the bottom and then our rope is going to come in at the top. And this dowel is going to allow the whole thing to spin freely. Now this little dab of glue is going to hold the whole thing together. Unfortunately, a little later in the build process, I realized that uh, the play in that wheel from side to side is too much and we have to make some adjustments. The old sawdust to make the glue go away trick, cut off the other side sand everything flush. But back on that uh, release mechanism, I had to create two circles to insert around the dowel on either side to hold it in place. I didn't get any footage of that, but it was kind of a repair. And so um, if you try to build something like this, you will need some bushings for lack of a better term, on either side, uh, wooden washers that help to keep that release mechanism centered in that chamber. The sanding here is just to knock off the pokey parts and the rough surfaces. We want the entire thing to still maintain a rustic look. Okay, for this part of the build, I am designing the trigger mechanism trying to figure out how I'm going to make the whole thing work. So a few measurements, some idea sketches, just trying to shape something that is going to allow us to release the string and uh, send a bolt flying through the air. And there, I think I've got something that's going to work. Now, to cut it out and give it a test. Overall, the piece is too wide to fit down in that chamber. And so it's back over to the table saw in order to make it a little thinner. It's also going to be a little taller than we need, and so we trim off a little bit there. 
and then it's over to the bandsaw where we can cut out that shape that you saw drawn a few moments ago. Now, unfortunately, I either didn't record that or I've lost that footage, but here is the final mechanism shaped. You get a view down inside on how it holds the trigger mechanism open and when you press down on it, it allows it to spin freely. Does wind ever blow up? Mm-hmm. Really? Yep. Huh. Could be called an updraft. Over there on the pegboard, is that what it is? They look like tiny doors, sort of. Mm -hmm. I think the people that lived here before, maybe they were trying to decide what window <clears throat> they needs to put up. Well, I hope you enjoyed those life lessons, and it's back to the build. The glue squeeze out on the top of the bows need to be removed, and the whole surface flattened out, and then the ends trimmed flush. Um, would recommend this as the safest of operations, but it's uh, all I could manage with what I had on hand to work with. And so, that's that. Gets the job done. Here we're measuring to find the exact center of the bow, and, um, well, I think we nailed it. Here I'm marking the width of the bow so that I know where to cut in order to support the bow and the stirrup, and then it's off to the screaming bandsaw to cut some wood. And that should do it. Well, look, there's some pin turning going on in the background. Now it's time to make the stirrup. I've got this piece of metal strapping from some HVAC um, leftover components, and um, I'm just have a rough idea on what I want to do here, and I am just going to beat this thing into a stirrup. Don't believe me? Stay tuned. I'm actually looking for kind of a hammered metal look. Give it kind of a, a wrought iron feel. And so uh, I saw this laying in the shop and I thought, hmm, I think I can make something work here. So for the next few moments there is a lot of pounding and twisting and measuring and eyeballing and more pounding and I even try to turn a couple of tools into an anvil. Limited success but it all worked out in the end. Alright I'm going to turn on super speed for the hammering portion here. This is a 2000% speed increase so it'll go a lot faster than it was in real life. <laughs> Thank you. 
All right, so it's time to check the fit. Once I see that everything is kind of lining up the way I want it, it'll be back to more hammer time. All right, now I'm testing the fit with the bow in place and we'll see how that goes and then mark the position of the stirrup on the front of the bow and the crossbow body on the back side of the bow or limb, 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 I know I've been saying bow, probably technically it's a limb. Comments will blow up if I ever get any comments. Comment below, like and subscribe. All right, now that we got the stirrup trimmed, need to mark the location of the holes that we're going to drill in order to attach the stirrup to the body. Just using the screws that we're going to use to put the assembly together to mark the body and a hand drill to bore out those holes. Next, we need to shape the ends of the limb in order to hold the string notches. Okay, I'm having a brain cramp here, but um, we'll shape those so that uh, the string will stay attached and won't slip off. Next, it's back to the scroll saw and we will cut those ends. You can see here, this lamination is just two pieces. This is the one that um, ended up with instead of the three and the four that you saw, which were way too stiff when we were gluing things up. So we're going to start putting the whole thing together. There's kind of a preview of what it's going to look like. Okay, now with the angle grinder, I am just shaving off the sharp edges. There are lots of little pointy corners from hammering this thing and cutting this stirrup. Um, so that's all the sharp bits. Don't want it to snag on anybody's costume, cause a tear or a rip. Um, and then down here on the foot part of the strip, just kind of cleaning that up. Don't want to tear up any boots. Don't want to cause any problems. Nice and smooth. Now 
Now we're cutting a ramp for the flight groove. Um, it was a little bit deep and the limb would cause the bolt to catch on there and so um, measuring that off then we'll cut it and secure it down inside there. Now if you use the sawdust from the wood that you're cutting, this will blend right in. We we'll just get ourselves a little bit of this. And we'll put it right on that hole where the brad nail went. Squish it in there. Grab us a little chisel. I'm going to press it in there. Alright. There you go. Now you can still see this because the it's wet and the glue is wet. And I wet the wood a little bit right there. But once that dries, it goes right away. just make a mess with this this is the mess that your mom would never let you make but in the shop you can make all the mess you want yeah that end grain really takes it in I'm not too concerned about unevenness in this. Um, I want it to look like it's been around a long time, well used. So, ooh, kind of dark on there though, isn't it? Is that five minutes? need to get a clock out here that's not on my phone. Note to self, clock project. It's funny, you can, can you see this? Right here in this end, it just soaks it up. Look at that, watch. like a straw and in grain coming around that corner just soaking it in this is the toughest part of a project you never know Stain will just go all wrong.
doesn't see much of a difference between the ebony and the jacobine. So I put some of that hammered black paint on there. How does that compare? Maybe do a couple of coats on that. Here I'm using the side of a hot soldering iron in order to melt the edges of this nylon strapping. That'll keep it from unraveling. Next we're going to find some hex head screws, um, bolts, lag bolts, and some washers to uh, use to attach these clasps to the body of the crossbow. First we'll form a hole for the screw to go through, more melting and sealing. And then we can get an idea of how it goes together. Washer on one side, screw through the strap which is wrapped around the clasp, washer on the other side, and that gives us a swiveling point of contact to attach to the body of the crossbow. Next are pilot holes. I'll drill those into the body so that we don't uh, split the wood straight out once we screw those in. Kind of the trick here is to snug this up so that it's nice and tight, but also still allows for some swivel movement. This strap is made out of a braided parachute cord. I'm using the soldering iron again here to seal the ends of the threads, but also to cut through each of the cords as we go, and then use it to uh, fuse them together so there's kind of uh, no ends dangling out that can fray out over time. to touch those up with a little bit of paint. Next step here is to measure the string and I'm creating a jig that will allow me to uh, shorten the string a little bit and then tie some loops in that can go over the um, the knocks, the 
the ends of the of the limbs. Alright, the trick here should be that I intentionally made this shorter so that it would put tension in the limb. I can string that on there. Come on. Oh. That is going to be tight. I hope it doesn't crack. Let's just fire something, huh? Test fire one. I think it worked. Okay, next on the agenda, we are going to build these crossbow bolts. You can see they have three flushes on there, and um, they are out to the side and up to the center. Um, they can't have that uh, standard triangle, three-point shape that you'd see in a bow and arrow type arrow, especially on this crossbow. Um, it would just break right off. So I'm using some plastic cards to create triangle shaped fletches to use on here marking them out on each of the dowels and then carving out um, a notched area where we can insert those and then super glue them in Now, if you have a sharp eye, you'll notice that one of these bolts doesn't have a top fletch on it. And that's intentional because part of the um, theatrical scene, um, a ghost comes by, pulls a bolt out of the crossbow, and magically flies it through the air and shoots the apple off a boy's head. And so we're not going to try and do that um, automatically. And if there was a top fletch on there, then the bolt wouldn't slip out um, from the, the crossbow very easily and so we're just leaving that out and that is on purpose and that is just uh, theater magic. So what we're doing here is we are taping up the fletches. We're going to paint the bolts black and then we're going to come back remove this painter's tape and we are going to paint these white.
All right, since this is like um, on a Sunday noon and uh, she needs these bolts since I procrastinated on getting this part of the project done in a few hours and it is cold outside, we are going to take advantage of the shop heater. That's the noise you're hearing in the background and we are going to rapid dry these bolts. You can see it takes no time at all for things to get really toasty and we should have some rapid paint drying going on. Now while the paint dries on those bolts, we need to come up with a method for her to carry a couple of bolts and a quiver of sorts. She can't carry one in addition to the crossbow on stage, uh, costume changes and stuff, it just becomes too complicated. So we're going to go back to our nylon strapping and we're going to create a little clasp where we can stick two crossbow bolts on the side of the crossbow and uh, they will not interfere with the functioning of the bow but will give her um, a couple of options in case something happens to one of them and she needs another there'll be a spare right there on the side. Alright, this looks like this is going to work out really well. Now, let's get back to painting the crossbow bolts. Alright, so I'm going to be using an old can of latex kills. This should uh, leave a nice white, flat white finish on the flushes and should cover up any of the red ink and the gray of the cards or anything else that might uh, normally poke through a white paint. This should cover it up and hide that real well.
And there you go, a perfect paint job for the stage. As I'm fond of saying while building set, it ain't fine home building. We're right back in front of the bullet heater and this uh, flat kills ought to dry pretty rapidly. Then we'll be able to uh, assemble it all together. Here are rapid dried crossbow bolts. Say that three times fast. Crossbow bolts, crossbow bolts, crossbow bolts. I don't think I could do it. All right, we'll put some into our side holder. Testing to make sure everything still works. There we go. Looks good. I'm not going to dry fire that. Could be bad. Now we'll knock up the magic arrow. And here's the magic firing in action. That worked out okay. So we should be all set. And there we have it. It's all assembled. Just in time for a dress rehearsal. Let's go outside and give it a try. Good enough to get up over the balcony, wasn't it? Yeah. And not kill anybody? No actual birds were harmed in the making of this film.